Hi, good morning. Thank you for coming for this uh, session. My name is Oad Shamir. I am product manager in CloudBand Nokia, and I'm working with the Vitraj official project for OpenStack uh, for root cause analysis from day one. With me here, Yuval Adar, R&D manager in CloudBand Nokia, and is leading our analytics team. We will talk beyond automation, how we are taking vitrage into the auto detection of RCA patterns using machine learning algorithms. So I will start with talking about what is root cause analysis, why, why we care. Then I will take you under the hood of the vitrage, how we are doing the root cause analysis in a vitrage. We will switch over and Yuval will, will talk about the next generation of uh, vitrage statistical approaches for RCA using machine learning algorithms uh, and what, are, what we already started to do and how we are going to, to progress on this in the coming uh, releases. So let's start. What is root cause analysis? If you will go to Wikipedia and look for the definition of root cause, you will find that the definition is a factor is considered a root cause if removal thereof from the problem fault sequence prevent the final undesirable event from recurring. Meaning that if I would know the root cause problem, I would be able to prevent the problem from occurring. Root cause analysis is the method identifying the root cause of system event, usually failures. And why we, do, why we, we care about root cause analysis? So root cause analysis has many uses. And it's, it's dramatically for our way of understanding and operating our system. So if you look on the diagram, the, the left side is the past and the current, current situation of the system. The right side is the future. So IT systems today are reactive only. They can provide the, the left side. We, we want to be able to be proactive, to predict the failure, to be able to, to prevent failure from occurring because we know the, the root cause analysis and we know to predict and to, to take the proactive action in order to prevent failures to occur. So let's start from, from the let, left side. So first, you want to, to understand the current status of the, your system. You want to, to know that if there is a, if you can't reach your VM, you want to know why. What happened? If you, you, you want to, to know if, if there is a host problem or maybe a, even other problem, you, you first want to, to understand and you want to, to be able to, to see the, the current status of the system. You want your system to reflect the current and the accurate status. Then you want to, to react and react fast. You want to fix your problem. If, if you can't reach your VM, you, you need to take some action. You may want to, to move it to another host or to restart it. And, it's, and the action that you will take in order to, to recover it is depends on the root cause. If, if the host is not available, you, you, you don't need to restart the VM. You, you, you have to, to move the VM to another location. So it depends on, on the root cause. Then we have the accountability. It's very important. You, you need to provide your customers, they analyze what is the current status of, of the system, what happened, and even what are the steps. To, to, to overcome those problems. What are you going to, to do in order to, to provide them the service that you promised? Then if we are going to, to the future, so we want to be proactive. We want not just 
to treat the symptoms, but also the root cause analysis. So if in the first reaction I, I treat the VMs that is unreachable, now I want also to, to maybe to go and to do, take action on the host or even on the, on the NIC. If there is a NIC failure causes the host to be unreachable, causes the VM to be unreachable, I want to now to, to treat the problem, the root cause problem, the, and, and fix the NIC failure. And last, and maybe one of very interesting, is the prediction. So if you will think about it, prediction is the reverse process of root cause analysis. Because in root cause analysis, I have a problem, and I understand what is the root cause. So if I understand the root cause, I can predict what will be affected from a problem. And so it's, it's a reverse process, and we can use the root cause analysis patterns to understand and also to predict failures that can occur in, in my system. So let's, let's go into under the hood of uh, Vitrage. So what we are doing in Vitrage, we called it uh, automating the the expert judgment of root cause analysis. We have the, if you look on the, on the right side uh, of the slide, we have multiple sources in, in Vitrage. We get the data. There is no one monitoring tool that can cover everything. You, you need to gather the information from multiple sources. So we are taking the information from Sources like OpenStack, the statuses from Nova, Neutron, Cinder, uh, e, and also from external system, for example, Zabbix or Nagios that monitors the, the hardware. But we are not collecting just the entities and the status of the system. We are also getting the data of all the alarms from the, from the different sources. So we are getting data, alarms from AODH, OpenStack, CollectD, and external systems like Zabbix and Nagios. So in the end, we, we can provide in Vitrage an holistic and complete view of the system, of the current status of the system, with all the alarms coming from the different sources. So you can see that I have a yellow square alarm on the switch and light blue triangle alarm on the host and etc. Then what we are doing in Vitrage, we are taking the, the expert knowledge, the human knowledge from the DevOps people. So the DevOps people know few patterns of alarms. They know that if there is a problem on the host, it may affect the VM. They know that the problem on the switch may affect the, the host and etc. So we talk all those use cases and, and, and root cause analysis patterns and automate them. And we automate them in, in, in a way that we called it Vitrage template. I will explain what is Vitrage template in, in a minute. But take a look on, on the left side diagram so I understand that so every shape is a, represent a different alarm, may come from different sources. So I understand that a, a green circle alarm causes red pentagon alarm. And I understand that light blue triangle alarm causes green circle alarm, and so on. So if I take it with the information we are taking from all the sources, now I can understand the relationship between the alarm. Now I can understand which alarm causes which alarm, and I, I, can, I can know the, the pattern and the relationship between the alarm. But not just this. It's not just to, to know the root cause. Look on the right side. So I know that blue triangle causes a green a circle alarm. So I know that the problem on the host causes a problem on the VM. But the second VM has no alarm. So I understand that. 
and I can deduce additional alarm and add more information to the system. So the, the, the dark green alarm is alarm that was added by Vitraj based on the understanding of the root cause analysis patterns and the topology of the system. So what is the Vitraj template? So Vitraj template is a very easy, readable way to, to, to capture this business logic of the root cause analysis pattern. So we are using YAML files. It's very human, it's human readable. It's very easy to add, very easy to modify it. So this is a very simple example that I have a, so we have on the template on the, on the top we have a section of definition and then we have the scenarios and each scenarios as the conditions, for example, unreachable host and host contains instance and then the action that I want to take. So in this case, I want to, to raise alarm on the instance calling this instance down and, and, and to set the severity of this alarm to be critical. So to summarize my part, building in vitrage, the, taking the, the human experience knowledge, automate it in, with the multiple data sources, provide an holistic view of the current situ, status of the of our system. We can understand exactly what are the status, what are the alarm coming from the multiple sources, and we can also propagate based on our insight and raise additional alarms and expose it to the, to the users. So this first step is very, uh, uh, it's fast ramp up, it's very easy to, to, to get efficient system and to get a, a good result very, very quickly. Uh, but, uh, and we can configure it, like you said, very easily to the, to the current configuration of, of each user or, or, or customer. But we won't take it to the, to the next level. And the next level is to create those patterns, those templates, automatically using machine learning algorithms. So I will switch over to, to Yuval to explain the, the next step uh, using the machine learning algorithms. Uh, hi, everybody. So thank you very much, Rod, for the overview of the Traj and what it knows how to do. And let's look toward the future of the Traj and how we envision it. So. The very next step for Vitrage is to overcome the limitations that we have today with our expert judgment. I mean, after all, all of our DevOps experts are only human and they have a certain bias. And they can analyze problems in their own way that they know that works for them, but they, that might not be the optimal way to do it. And usually, the evolution of these patterns is pretty slow, so it might be well suited for smaller environments, but looking forward to larger environments, it's not the best approach. And also, when we're talking about big data, it's very hard to use our current approach. So, the, what we want to do is to apply statistical analysis. And we want to discover connections between the alarms that we get from our systems and we don't want to be affected at all by the contextual base, uh, bias. And what we see here as a potential is that the new system will always be on. We don't have to rely on human experts who do have work but also have families. And we can easily adapt this new approach to every single system. So what's very important to just to note here that currently in Vitrage, a part of our future plan is already in review, but a lot of following slides are only challenges that we face and general ideas on how to approach those challenges. So let's talk a little about statistical causal analysis. What is the main challenge that we have here? 
When we're talking about causal relationships between certain events, we can always look at it in, in a very simple direction. We can have two events that occur in our system, event X and, and event Y, and we can create a connection between, between these two events and we can say X will cause Y. But then it doesn't have to be always that way. Y can cause X in certain cases, or there might be even a confounding variable somewhere outside of the system which will be the cause of both of those events that have happened. So correlation between the events is very easy to find. If we see a pattern that we have X appearing and then Y appearing after X, it's very easy. We can say X causes Y. But the actual causation is very difficult to determine in this way. And even if we have very consistent correlation over time, they, they can be misleading. And I can give you a very simple example for that. So let's say I'm walking outside and I notice that my hair is wet. And there can be probably 20 different reasons for my hair being wet, but I can also hold an umbrella in my arm. And I can say, well, it's raining. I have an umbrella in my arm, so rain caused my hair to be wet. But on the other hand, tomorrow morning, I can notice that my hair is wet. I don't have an umbrella in my arm, and it's not raining. So I need to figure out why my hair is wet. So when we look at statistical RCA, the way data is collected and re represented in the system, we developed an algorithm in collaboration with Bell Labs, our colleagues, and every alarm or a fault in the system key can be represented as a section on the timeline. And we have the segment, we know when it starts, we know when it stops, and we know the time that the alarm was active on the timeline. And we can group these segments over time according to their fault type and by the resource ID. And that way we can create a timeline of the events as they have occurred on the system. And once we start gathering these events, we get to the basis of our algorithm. We start comparing these events and comparing their timelines when they're caused and we can find overlaps between these events. And we can easily notice that in certain amount of cases, the majority of cases we have our X and Y events with a large overlap and occasionally we have the Y event which occurs without the X event. And then we consider the temporal evidence of this causation. So logically we can say that cause precedes the effect and the event X will always cause the event Y, but the event Y can happen without the event X. And this is the basic concept that we have behind the idea. And now let's go to the actual design of this RCA. So the way the flow goes, first we need to collect the data. I mean, Ohad already mentioned that Vitraj knows how to get the data from various data sources. We know to query OpenStack. We can get our topology straight out of Heat, out of Nova. And then we can collect all of the events that occur in our system, either using OpenStack services like Silometer or AODH, and I'm saying Silometer on purpose because we know how to work with OpenStack Liberty. Even though we're downstream and we're rushing ahead, we are all also backported all the way down to Liberty. And we can gather all of these events and then we go into the analysis phase. Once you have all the events, we want to analyze them and find the causalities between the events. And once we do that, we want to make an update, and th this is the new approach. Instead of having our human experts to sit down and write the templates, we want to create these templates ourselves. And we want, to put, we want to put them in a template repository where we can actually utilize our experts in a better way, where they'll review the existing new templates and they can choose which ones really apply to our system and which ones they would like to use in production. So if you look at, look at the diagram of Vitrage architecture, I don't know how many of you are already familiar with the product. Uh, it looks pretty similar to what it used to be until now. We have the main Vitrage graph engine, which is connected to all the data sources, and it's connected through Vitrage API to the dashboard, to the command line, and then we have the notifier service, but then we have the two brand new boxes here, which is the alarm accumulator, which we don't have right now. Right now, Vitrage has a memory database, and the moment an alarm is gone from the system, it will be removed from the database, and we don't have the history, and we want to have this history in the alarm accumulator, 
and we also want to have the stats analyzer, which will over time analyze all of the events that have occurred on the system, and then we will put them in the template database. And from there, they can always be pulled and applied, or they can be discarded if, if that is the case. So here are the notes and some preliminary results from the tests that we made. So first, I want to mention two very important numbers. When we're talking statistics, there are only two numbers that matter, and that's one and zero. And everything in between one and zero is what really counts for us. So <clears throat> the main goal of our algorithm is to find the correlation score between two events. And we can always set thresholds for these scores. And we can, we can tell the algorithm, find us all events that have correlation score above 0 0.6. And it will present us with those. And in the data that you can see in the slide below, this is not exactly OpenStack data. Unfortunately, it's based from one of our other products. You can see that we have events with a very, very high correlation, like we have alarm, that we have suboptimal performance in machine, which is correlated one to one with another alarm of the same type. And then we have medium correlation, which is above 0 0.1, where you have a lot more alarms that have correlation based on their timeline. And right now, we need bigger setups to test this algorithm. Because we can take the algorithm, we can bring it to a system, and we can do reverse analysis, analysis of problems we already have, or we can just apply it to existing alerts that are on the system and get this data. So this algorithm already has a couple of basic limitations, and there is very little we can do about this basic limitation. And the first biggest problem is that temporal precedence between two events can be caused by different factors. So if you look at the timeline and we have these two events, we might not sample them at the same time. So that's the monitoring frequency impact that we have on the system. And a real life example can be a system which is monitored by Nagios and it also has ganglia on top. And we know that ganglia will by default sample everything every 10 seconds and give us reports and Nagios by default samples every 30 seconds. And then it's very hard to correlate this data because we can say event X started before event Y, but event X comes from ganglia, which has a higher sampling rate than the event Y. And this might not be exactly the case. So we can see this overlap, but we have to uh, overcome it somehow. And the other limitation is that in a lot of cases, there can be a time lag between the events, even if your sampling rate is exactly the same there might be a glitch in the network and your Nagios data might arrive five milliseconds later or five milliseconds before the data you get from, from, from another system. And this is something that we can actually easily overcome. First, what we need to do is we need to find some overlap between these events. And our algorithm can do time shifts. And that's exactly what we do in this case. So first, we try to find correlating events. <coughs> And then we can do a little time shift just to find the causality relations between these events that occur. Another big limitation that we have and that we need to overcome is that when we use our entity graph as the engine, we can only find events that are directly connected to each other. It doesn't matter which path they go through. And it's very hard to find external causes for these events. So in this case, we can have a non-monitored event that occurs somewhere in our system. And we know that we have these two elements, A1 and A2, which have a raised alarm. There is no direct connection between the two elements. So maybe here we can deduce that there is an outside element which directly caused these two events. And in that way, we can, we can find the relations. And here we come to our entity graph, which can help us overcome these limitations because the, the, graph, the graph engine we have right now really has a tremendous potential as a troubleshooting tool in all of our environments. And it can represent all of these relations that you have between the elements in the network. And if we do become smart enough to, to see those unmonitored events, we can represent them already on the graph and we can create the causal relationships between, the, between those events. 
So here you can see that we have a very, very strong correlation between A1 and A2, which is caused by an external A0 event. And of course, this is on the roadmap. We still don't have this in the code. And everybody is more than welcome to contribute. It will be highly appreciated if anybody wants to help us out. And this is what I said about using the entity graph. It can also help us to deal with the sampling rate problem. And here we just need to, in the entity graph, we need to add weight to certain elements. And we can also help it learn. So in your system, you always have your physical host and you have VMs running on the physical host. So you can always define that your physical host will most likely be the cause of problems that you experience in your virtual machines. I mean, we can always think of a different scenario where the relationship goes the other way, but we can all probably agree that in over 90% of the cases, the physical hardware will cause issues on a virtual infrastructure. And we can add guidelines to the algorithm to implement this bias from the start and help us get better root cause analysis of the problem. So as we said, Vitrage is taking the first big steps toward using real machine learning to detect all the causal dependencies here. And initial results we have are very promising, but we still need to get feedback from the community and the industry just to validate all of our results. And yeah, stick around. It will be interesting to see what happens next and to see everything on the roadmap and, of course, to contribute. And thank you very much. So if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. But I just have to warn you, everybody, I'm just a manager. I'm not the most technical guy, but I probably have enough backup in the room. Thank you. My name is uh, Michael McCune. I'm just curious. If you guys uh, decide on what kind of processing engine you're going to use for like the, the data analysis portion, like Spark, Flink, those, those kind of tools? I think that we're using our own engine. Oh, OK. Vitrage engine. Actually, the, the entity graph that I mentioned is the engine which does the analysis. OK. So, so you're, not, like, you're not creating a, you're not using some sort of external framework to do the data processing on no. the data that you're bringing in? No. <laughs> Thank you. How dependent are you on the open stack uh, portion of the data, data collection or data resources? Or in other words, if I have a storage box, uh, can I just replicate the kind of output that you will get from Cinder? And will it, or if you have a standardized interface like a REST API, can that be your engine driving the data collection from uh, the storage, for example? Right now, we are semi-dependent on OpenStack, but we also know how to work without OpenStack, and that's something that is our, on our roadmap. We need to be able to build the entity graph, and we do have API interface for that. So as long as you can provide us the data that we expect to receive. So the example of the live data that I've shown here wasn't done with OpenStack. It was done with, with an NFE orchestrator that comes from Nokia. And we can gather data from that product, and we can do correlation with all the alarms. So that is definitely on the roadmap. And there are already a few ideas on how to make a very open and generic implementation. So uh, as I said before, we have multiple plugins, data sources for Vitrage. And it's quite easy to add new data source. We found it like a couple of weeks' work to, to, to add a new data source so you can switch and, and bring your own data source instead of OpenStack sources. Uh, in the end, you, you, you need to, to build, uh, uh, to, to get all the information. So you, you have to make sure that you're covering all the, the components that you have, storage, network, compute, and everything. But it's possible. Yes, and another thing to mention, right now, the Vitrage user inter interface is dependent on Horizon, but in a roadmap for the next release, we have a standalone UI, which is completely independent of the OpenStack framework. And uh, where are you guys at with the Sensor plugin? Right now, I think it's on the roadmap, but at this moment, we cannot use Sensu to gather data. Okay. Probably shouldn't be too difficult to implement because we used to have Nagios integration. 
and Sensu and Nagios are pretty backwards compatible with each other. So I believe it would be fairly easy to implement Sensu. Uh, so where can we go to contribute that if we want? Well, the code is in GitHub. It, the Vitrage is an OpenStack project. It's out on GitHub. You're more than welcome just to clone the code and send us your patches. Right. We, we have IRC channel and uh, weekly meetings in the IRC, so you're more than welcome to, to join. Yeah, we've got some guys that would like to contribute. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first one is a follow-up of what uh, the first gentleman asked. Uh, about the analytics engine. So, uh, as I understand, probably it uses the Vitraj graph as the analytics engine right now. Can it be, or is it pluggable? So, for example, I have my own, some implementation uh, to do some analytics. Can I just plug into rest of the pieces uh, or, or the infrastructure and still use my engine instead of Vitraj uh, default or whatever comes with the community code? I think at this stage that is not possible. Okay. And the second question is um, some of these correlation, uh, okay, I'm very new to Vitraj, but uh, let me put it this way. Uh, I see a lot of data coming from various monitoring agents or sources, uh, but some of this information is also available in log. Uh, for example, Maybe the monitoring may not catch it, but it is available in the logs of various uh, services or components. Is it possible to feed some of that data into uh, this infrastructure and get some correlation out of it? Uh, it technically would be possible. Right now, you don't have this option, and there are ideas for the future to collect vitrage with various log collectors like Elasticsearch the whole ELK stack, and even if, if you look at our product, we do have ELK installed by default, which will collect all the logs, and there are ideas to correlate this data with Vitrage, and just to give Vitrage even more yeah. data sources. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's officially on the roadmap, but it will definitely happen sometime in the future. Yeah. Because currently what we use is like, we do a lot of this kind of analytics from the logs rather than the live metric data. Uh, because of many reasons, uh, and, and, and probably we would love to use it with logs for the same infrastructure. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. As I mentioned, currently available version of Vitrage can only give you the current state of the system. We still don't have history, and we can only look at what is going on right now. And the moment we go into saving our own history, the next logical step will be to make a correlation with the logs that we have collected so we can see what happened in the system five days ago, three months ago, yeah. or whatever your data retention plan is. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There are no more questions. Thank you very much.